Our next maker is Julie Chen, and she's from the East Bay, and she makes books. Um, she'll talk about them. She describes uh, working with books as working with a time-based medium. And, you know, all of you have pop-up books as kids and, and things that it, books are, can be an interactive medium as well. So she also teaches book making. I don't know if that's the right phrase, yeah. at, um, at Mills College. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. So I make um, limited edition books. So they're all um, letterpress printed. So I use a printing press, an old sort of old fashioned printing press that I have in my garage to print all the books, even though a lot of times they are digitally um, designed. They're put together um, in a kind of low tech sort of way. Oops, sorry. So um, here's a, an example of an early work. So a lot of my books have um, interactive parts. So they're not just the standard book that you would find in the bookstore, but they take different formats. Here's one that um, is about the idea of reinventing the world or reimagining the world. And so it has that um, different type of, of shape that it can go into. And then um, here's a book that's, uh, or a series of books that's supposed to be like a box of candy, because I love candy. <laughs> so I thought you know, it would be really fun to create a, a book that had that irresistibility of, of a box of candy. Um, but I'm also really interested in the interactivity of books. And um, this is a piece called Personal Paradigms. That's also a, it's a book and a board game. So um, in the box, there are all these drawers and, and uh, game parts that the viewer would take out and then play the game. And then once you uh, play the game, you record your play in a book. So your record, the record of your playing the game becomes a permanent part of the book. Um, so it has all these different types of game pieces that I've made out of plexiglass and wood that um, the player or the viewer would uh, be able to interact with. And uh, there's a die that you roll to get a, a random number. And then once you pick out all your parts, you put it on the game board and you arrange it in any way that you would like. And then um, after you're done, there's a ledger book that comes with the set that you would then record your, your play in. And so future viewers of the game could also see your play. And, so, and, and if you came back and played again, you could look back on the record of your previous play. So here, here's the whole set with kind of all the drawers pulled out. And you can see that it's got quite a number of movable pieces. Um, I'm also really interested in uh, books that are, have a more um, traditional format. But I'm always sort of tweaking that. So this is a, a fairly large format book called Panorama that has these really big pop-ups in it. So you turn the page, and when you open this book, it's maybe four feet wide, a little bit less than four feet wide. So you, you pull open the book, and this big pop-up kind of rises out of the center. So, um, so using all the different techniques that are available to bookmakers um, working in paper, and trying to figure out um, different ways to use them. This same book also has um, sections that fold out so that the pages kind of open up like this. And then in the center, there is a section that, that has a fold up that comes up. So you see one image when you uh, first uh, look at the book. And then you can lift up the flaps and see another image underneath. And so that book has both the pop-ups and the fold out sections. Um, this is another book called True to Life, which uses a, a different type of format. Um, this is where I'm really interested in the idea of time and the idea that um, things in books only get revealed over time. So they have a lot of books have a big similarity to film in that regard um, because you can't just look at it once and see the whole thing. You have to turn the page or flip up a section in order to see the rest of the content. So this book has little wooden handles on the sides. And um, here's a close-up of it. And then as you lift up the handles on the side, a new type, um, version of the image appears. And then it replaces the old image. And here's another version. So you can see the handles that are sort of moving in, in space on the side that causes another image to reveal itself. So all the 12 pages are in this device. 
it's sort of, it's funny, we, um, this, this one's about this big, but I did a workshop with a group of students and I had to make it a little smaller. And somebody said it looked just like an, uh, the size of an iPad, you know, but it's like the manual iPad because you can only slide it up with the handles. So a lot of my, my work I do in editions of 100, which is completely different from, from our last speaker, Roger, who never does the same thing twice. Uh, when you're printing things, it's, it often makes sense to print more than one because you have to set up a printing press and that takes a while, so you might as well run a number of sheets of paper through it and make more than one. Um, this is a book called A Guide to Higher Learning. This is the box. A lot of my work comes in boxes that help protect the book, but also um, kind of give you um, a preview or a, an idea of, of what might be in the, the box. And this is the book itself, so you can see again that I'm not working with anything that, that you might find in the bookstore. It's not the type of book that many people have maybe thought about. If you saw this um, just sitting on a table, you might not immediately think, oh, that's a book. But um, what it does is every section around the edge of that square unrolls. And so here's a, a little um, a version of how it does that. So here's a close-up of that first set of, of um, square panels. And as you um, unroll them, you can read the text. And you keep unrolling, you keep reading, and then something else appears on the other side. And so, and there's also these little boxes with text in them. So again, I'm just manually rolling out the pages, reading the text, flipping them over, and then another thing appears. And so, the whole idea of reading in terms of um, the way we read in books is still available to people here, but there's also something else that's happening. So here now you see one whole side has been rolled out. And if we continue on, kind of speed it up, so you'd be reading the text. So the text is about this idea of trying to master something very difficult. And so you've decided that you're going to do it. It's sort of like taking a test and you're very methodical about it and you're, you're doing this thing and you're reading about how you're, you're able to, um, you think you're gonna get it in the end. But what happens partway through the text is you discover that there, there's no way that you can really master this idea, but you continue to read because there's something else that's happening. And so this is the, the end result when you're done. It's, a, it's um, a lot of mathematical equations, and I'm not very good at math, so I had to have somebody help me with this. But I wanted what you ended up with to have this game board feeling, but also have the sense that even though you may not understand what it is, you can tell that there's a lot of really um, valuable and important information embedded in um, the, the graphics that you see. So I have a few shots of my studio. Um, I, I live in Berkeley and I, I work out of my house. Um, I, I also love toys, that's sort of the, off, the other part of, um, you know, a lot of, I think a lot of what we do is, uh, when, as makers, is we're interested in, in sort of having fun with, with, the, with the objects that um, we make. These are some of the tools I use. I use very simple tools for the most part. Um, scissors and folders, uh, it's, a, it's a lot of handwork. Uh, we need a lot of weights in bookmaking, and so these are um, bricks that are just wrapped with bacon wrapping paper. <laughs> that um, we call them the bacon bricks, but they're just bricks that we we weight things down while they're drying, while the glue is drying. And then a lot of other old sort of fashion machines that are still in use. This is a a hot stamper. This is a dry mount press, kind of boring looking machinery, but uh, again, it takes someone to operate them. They're not totally automated. This is a Vandercook proofing press, which is the type of press that used to be used by newspapers once upon a time to proof the, the, the sheets of type before they put it on the big industrial press to make sure there weren't any typos. And a lot of artists have taken these over. Um, so this is, it's a machine, but it takes a lot of um, very close uh, connection with the operator. So this is just a, a plate, um, a photopolymer plate of numbers that was from another book that I'm gonna be printing. From, uh, with the printing press. So I'm gonna just show you a few shots of, of how I put together an edition. This is a, a book called Invented Landscape. Um, this is the, a picture of the book in the box and then a picture of the book standing up sort of in a little circle. And here's how it looks when it's opened up um, all the way. It stretches out to about this wide. And um, it's a, the, uh, the book is about the idea of how we, we think we know a place if we've seen it on TV or we've read about it in a book, but 
unless you've actually been there, what do you really know about the place? And so I wanted to create this invented landscape as part of the book. And so when I start a project, I do a lot of research, usually online to start, so I'm looking at online pictures of the landscape that I want to make or that I'm thinking about making. This is also um, had to do, it started out as a project I had to do for a big show um, with uh, the theme of nomadism. So I was thinking about nomadic cultures. And so this is Mongolia, where there are a lot of, still a lot of nomadic um, people. In fact, I think 40% of the country in Mongolia is still nomadic. So I would start by looking at pictures. I've never been to Mongolia, so I'm going to get all my information from research. And then I would take um, various inks and um, try and create this image that I want, a very simple image of the landscape. So this is just inking up strips of torn paper with different colors of ink. So here's sort of like, looks like kind of like green bacon, long green bacon, that we then lay out on a printing, on a etching press. And then we're going to transfer that image to a piece of paper. So this particular edition has a, a, it took a long time just to do the landscape, even though it looks fairly simple. Each one had to be colored by hand. But then the background of that page is printed uh, letterpress from a photograph. So I take a photograph, blow it up, make a plate, ink up my printing press so that I can get a big image of that um, close-up of grass, which is what the original picture was. And then I put it on the laser cutter. And that way, I can cut out all those shaped pages. When you, when you saw the book opened up, all the panels were kind of floating there. So, so I also have a laser cutter in my studio, in my garage studio, next to the printing press. So I've got a mixture of very old machinery and, and a slightly newer machinery. So you can see it there. You can't really see it working. It's kind of actually boring to run this machine. But the little laser light will cut through the paper in any um, configuration that I want. So I do that on the computer. And then you can see my, I'm pulling out the, the piece from the machine. And it's, you can see now it has cuts in it. Here's a better picture of how the cuts were made by the machine. And so again, here's the, the box for that book. Opening up, you can see the photographic um, printing of the grass. Then you see the book in the middle. Here's the book standing up with uh, parts of the landscape. And then you can see on the back side, there's the text. Those brown pages have strips with the text on it. So you can read this in your hand. You can hold it in your hand and read it like a book. And then when you're done reading, you can set it on the table and open it up really wide. So I'm going to just finish uh, my little talk with uh, the mascots in my studio, my little toy collection that, that I can see whenever I'm kind of taking a break from the workbench. So thank you. <laughs>